Hello and welcome to another Let's Play part number 7 for Star Trek Online. I am your host, the Crimson Phoenix, and today we'll be doing Wars Good for Business. But before we do that, we got a little business of our own to sell with. So, right now, in our last part, as we remember, we leveled up. We leveled up to Lieutenant Commander, level 10, which allowed us to get a new ship, the USS Cherokee, a Constitution refit. Which is basically the cruiser refit uh, right now as it stands, which we are able to uh, make some adjustments and everything. Right now, it needs some weapons, which we're going, which I'm gonna go, which I'm looking into right now. I've already bought a few um, on the on the exchange a, mo a moment ago. I had to get everything set up, but I figured you know might as well pull up the exchange in this in this video, so that way y'all can get learned into it. So here's the exchange. It's where players can sell their stuff. It's where you can buy stuff sold by the players. Most of this is either one or two things. It is either loot that the that uh, that the player has looted from an event or from a mission cuz as you know all the missions they do drop any form of loot. And of course there are stuff in here that the that the player has crafted. Now the crafting is basically with the R&D progress thing, uh, which let me pull that up here. Which is this is pretty much everything. Um, some stuff that people uh, can make. Right now, my general research skill is at zero, so I cannot make anything but the bare minimum, which is this. All this is all I can is all I can pretty much make if I had the resources. After that. People can make pretty much anything they want afterwards. Now, there are some other stuff here. They we also got some weapons over here for ship weapons, uh, components, consoles, and such here. And this is all, and all this players can make, and they can pretty much sell it on the exchange uh, that I showed you earlier. And with that, they can make mo lots of money. Some people can put this stuff up for thousands of credits or um, hundreds of thousands and such. Uh, the only thing that's really special on uh, stuff that people can make or that, that they can sell on the exchange is of course uh, this little set. It's its own set. It's called the Ages um, set. It's something that you can only use as a rear admiral lower half which I believe it's like level 40 I believe. Let me double check in here. Yeah, level 40. Which later on of course, uh, later on, I can get, I can see about getting a set, and maybe even play around with it. But right now, we need some equipment on the, Cher on the Cherokee. So right now, I've already picked up a few things. I got a couple of phaser rays and Mark uh, Mark three purples. Two of them have the two of these has the accuracy and damage buffs because the higher the the the, the higher the, the higher number of um damage amplifiers and buffs and everything that's on the weapon means that's the more that's the more most rarest you got there is four different types of weapons out there there's the commons which is basically no damage amplifiers it's the uncommons that has one damage amplifier or one buff rares has two and very rare has three I got these right here which has accuracy which does which increases the accuracy and damage which increases the damage uh, um, by two times here times two basically means um, it's that same buff but twice its um, capacity and I also got this photon torpedo here that's got crit D which um, does a plus 20% crit severity and damage times two which of course does twice the damage right now for mark three uh, photon especially in this level that's actually pretty good well, this is pretty much where you can find everything right now easiest way if you want to find something around what you're using right now just click on the item and hold down the left button and drag it into the uh, into the little um, browser thing here right now we're looking for photons choose um, you can either choose um, up here where it says all or you can choose down here in the ship's equipment and select ship weapons. Right now, I got the ranks as Lieutenant Commander. 
and severity and very rare. I took some money out of the accountant bank to buy some of the stuff, so I'm gonna see if we can make this um, as mean as possible. Uh, here we go. Here's one that's about 200,000. I'm not gonna buy it because, you know, one, I'll be honest, if you buy an item that only has one um, buff, but it's times three, then yeah, it can be pretty much of a good weapon. However, at the same time, it's not that great. It's not going to be that great. Now, some people for the P for player versus players has been going for weapons that's um, accuracy times three because with accuracy times three, that's three times um, your accuracy. So most, so most, if not all of your DPS, your damage per second is going, or damage per shot is going into your enemy. Sometimes accuracy times three is good. Now, for fleet weapons, of course, uh, which we'll get to that later. Fleet weapons, I'd recommend either accuracy one or accuracy times two. But I'll show you those um, in a, another in, a, in another video later on. So right now, crit H times three. Pretty good times six on the uh, plus six percent of the critical chance. But I want to go with just the critical severity and the damage times two. So let's go with the cheapest out there, seventy-nine thousand and nine hundred ninety-nine, close to eighty thousand. So now we got two. Pretty much, you can either drag them or you can uh, pretty much do what I'm going to do here. Just double click on the items to get them out, and then. One at a time, click on them, double click on them, okay. That'll always come up because it, because as, as it says, if you equip this item, it will not be tradable. So if you have an item that is not a common, and if, it, and if it's not common, and it says um, account bind on equip or character bind on equip, that means that item is bound to either the character or the account and cannot be ch and cannot be transferred over to another player. I'm sure lots of people have probably seen this with other games as well. I'm pretty sure you probably know this in like WoW or Tor, or even other games like Star Wars Galaxies. If y'all ever played any of those. So right now, that's all I'm pretty much looking into right now. But I do want to get some sort of consoles for defense. Now right now we got two science. Uh, two engineering. I right, already got one in engineering, which is the field emitter. But you know, I actually don't want to have that in there. Thinking about it, I mean, it does. It does. Plus, let's see, what is it? Plus one point five shield power setting. So that plus it, that puts a plus one point five in your power setting for shields, which could be good if you're looking into tanking. But at the same time, I want to look for something a little bit more on the defensive side. So. Let's look into consoles. So you got three types of consoles: uh, engineering, science, and tactical, which does good for their parts. I'm still going to use the very rares because I want to put look for something that's pretty, uh, that's going to be pretty good to use. So, ooh, electroplasma. As you see there, it does defenses on plasma and tetrion damage. Right now, we're not in that area to do tetrions or anything. So here's pretty much what I would recommend to uh, most people into looking into. What I would re recommend, let me find it in here. New, oh, you gotta be kidding me. How do you? When all else fails, go to and when all else fails, go to the Dilithium store, which you can find the names on some items if you forgot. Let's go here. Um no, no. Let's fail. Let that guy get his Voth Cruiser. Here we go. Engineering consoles. What I'm looking for Is this it? Oh, that'll work. Okay, that uh, okay. So that's what it is for Mar uh, for Mark uh, for Mark fours. Yeah, and there's gonna be lots of different things out here. Right now, let's see. This is a Tritanium alloy. Let's see. Well, this does plus seven point five kinetic damage resistance and seven point point five all energy uh, damage. All energy is basically phaser, uh, polaron, plasma disruptor. 
Tetrion, Anti Proton, and etc. And kinetic is basically what damage you um, that you sustain from a torpedo attack. Now the higher the tier looks like here, the more uh, the different type of uh, alloy it's called. Mark IV. It's called Tritanium, which we all know what it is. Mark VI. That is a uh, Victorium. What's Mark Eight? Mark Eight, Polydernium, and then Mark Ten is where we get the Neutronium. Okay, so Neutronium is what's and is what we're gonna want when we get to Mark Ten. Okay, so let's look for Titanium as soon as it pops up. That's not it. The Burnium, uh, that's all, uh, you'll find some armors out here that only does um, a couple. You'll even find some that uh, that does four. Like a blade of armor does, let's see, it does phaser, disruptor, plasma, and tetrion. While tetraburnium, it does plasma, tetrion, polaron, and antiproton. Now I gotta find out that name for that thing again. <laughs> Let's see. Tritanium. Why? Why was? Why was I thinking titanium? Try. It had an anium in it. Apparently, I don't know how to spell. And apparently they don't got it in very rare. So let's see if we can find it in just a regular rare. More likely we will. There we go. Tritanium. Let's see. Tritanium alloy mark. Let's look for a mark four. It they don't have it in mark four. So if we wanted mark fours, we're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to spend a little bit of money. But you know what? I'm not exactly looking to spend any dilithium. So let's just get this. Yeah, it's gonna cost a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, that that's gonna be okay. So after that, after that, we're gonna look into another thing. Let's see if we can get the ablative in a purple. And is that gonna come up for a purple? So we're gonna have to go with the um, blue here. Actually, let me take a look here. Armor. Um, let's just look for. Let's try alloy. Monotanium. Okay. You know, here's what we're gonna. You know, here's what we'll do. I'll buy that. I'll get the monotanium for that. Monotanium. It does. I mean, it's in a monotanium. It does all connect damage. I recommend this for most people who may and who, who may want to get a little bit more resistance in connect damage especially for people who may get attacked by players or anybody who may use um, some high level uh, torpedo abilities especially or even mines because the connect damage it works best for both the mines as well as the torpedoes so let's equip those And then let's look for something in the science uh, category. So this is pretty much all we can what we can get here. Calendar measure systems, what does improves confusion and plac and placate and placate. Bleh, I cannot speak. That thing it does confusion and everything else. Uh, particle generators, which we may not need, does exotic damage. And that's pretty much good for if you're a science officer who is using possibly um, who, who, who's, who's using something that does a lot of particle damage. More counter systems, inertial dampeners. Resistance to hold, disable, knock, repel, and slow. That's for anything with that. Uh, graviton generators, that's for um, improves the knockback, repel, and slow. Uh, for anything, for whether whether or not it's a tractor beam or anything, I believe. Now, what I want to look for here, something for the shields, which 
I'm gonna have to look for something in the rares because uh, this is because it's just a little bit out there, and that's even more out there. So, you know what? We're probably gonna get with a few missions on here with those. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna leave the gonna leave that as it is. So let's look for let's look for this. Okay, tacticals. I'm only gonna look for one. So right now we can go with any with, with anything right now because I'm using a little bit of photons here I'm not too worried about the phasers so much so I'm gonna want a little bit more photon damage so we're gonna buy this uh, photon detonator assembly which does um, plus 11.2 percent in photon and photon projectile weapon damage so if you're using photons you're gonna want to get that and you're gonna want to get that and if you want, if you're using, if you got the tactical consoles to put more than one tactical console on there, if you're using phasers, I would recommend getting a phaser relay, which you may remember that I use on uh, my on the governor. I believe I use it on. So you may want to look into getting uh, one of those and local glitches here and there. All right, so right now I think we're pretty good. Right now, the shields and everything, I'm not going to be worried about since we're just going to be doing PVEs. Um, this stuff here, I'm um, just going to delete those and even gonna recycle that. But before I recycle that field emitter, let me go ahead and show you something you want to do. So whenever you, whenever you got any kind of blue items or even purple items that you go onto the exchange and you see that is not gonna give out any much of um, any much of a high resource value for it's um for its worth or you just see that it's bound to you so you can't sell it anyway you go to a vendor you go to the sell option and you just sell it at a vendor because you actually get a little bit more money selling items at vendors than you do with just deleting it disassembling it or by deleting it from the replicator so if you got items that you want to sell, sell them all at a vendor. Common, uncommon, rare, or anything. I would recommend mostly selling stuff that you may not and that would be anything that you may not need for such stuff such as um, deflector arrays, impulse engines, and shield arrays, and especially warp cores as well, because those four items is what gets the um, g gives you the most money in anything especially the mar especially the more um, higher level like mark 10s and such all right so we got all that sold out there and um, I already got to the fourth uh, I already got to the fifth uh, officer for us uh, let me pull him up Yaran who's a trail male who came out of that uh, who came who came out of that um, Steam package that if you remember if y'all remembered me opening that a couple of a couple of months ago, he came out of that. He came out of that Steam package where you got where we got in the Steam Runner. So he's pretty good. He pre comes with wet with his own weapons, his own equipment, and everything. And his abilities are pretty good. All right, so let's um let me do a little bit of editing here in this bunch to kind of show you of uh, other things has been added into uh, this game a bit so here is what we have right now so here's some of the abilities that's all uh, that we got here I right, got that in there and here's something else that Star Trek Online has added which I completely love I uh, I enjoy this these abilities quite a lot here they are the cruiser commands these are commands that cruisers can, can can use and these affect your ships and you, they affect your ships um, f for you as an individual and they also affect your ally ships whenever they are within your range um, I'll explain these while I'm doing a little bit of a little bit of editing here for some stuff here okay so Let's start with one command. Here is the command Weapon System Efficiency. Affects friend, friend and self, a uh, maximum of 20. Does a, uh, it does a minus 25% weapon power cost to yourself and allies. What this does is basically the weapon power thing that's right here. 
it reduces the cost to your weapons by 25% because when you hover your mouse over any weapon, it lets you know that to self it does plus 10, it does minus 10 weapon power when firing other weapons. Basically that, and oh, somebody already did a one of those commands, which brought down, which brought down from 10 to minus 8. Sometimes I'm not exactly sure if multiples will bring it down any further. Not only one. So that's what this that does. We also have command attract fire. This is for some people that can pro and that and that it can tank. It increases the threat and decrease it increases the threat on you for threats control, and it decreases an ally's threat generation and this uh, generation and scaling damage resistance. So to self it does a plus 12.5 all damage resistance rating, a plus 7.5 additional damage resistance rating for yourself per ally within 5 kilometers, up to 5 allies. So if you have 5 people, or in this case if you have like 4-5 or five people around you, then that increases an additional 10 damage. Right now if I was to put that up, you know that you, you know it, it can increase a little bit. It does a plus hundred percent threat generation for yourself and decreases the threat generation of near by allies by fifty percent while active. Now that's pretty good. I'm gonna move that over here. Now, so another thing that we have here is the shield frequency modulation. It does a plus ten damage reduction to shields to your, for yourself and allies, and a plus ten percent of shield regeneration. For yourself and nearby allies, basically it de it reduces the damage for your shields and increases your shield regeneration rate. It's a pretty good ability uh, for cruisers and such. And the other thing that we have here, of course, is the strategic maneuvering. It does a plus 10% flight uh, speed for yourself and nearby allies, and a plus three in your turn rate for you and nearby allies. So basically, your speed's going to increase and your turn rate's going to increase. And for some people who uses cruisers, mainly stuff like the Galaxy and the Sovereign, mainly mainly the Galaxy though, because that's the biggest ship ever. Um, most people will want to use the strate strategic maneuvering simply because your turn rate is a lot better. Now, of course, some people can use other stuff, but you can, can use their abilities however they want, but it's, I would recommend using that just so, just so that you can keep yourself from uh, dying, mainly. So, let's uh, go ahead, let me go ahead and get this uh, set up here, which is actually pretty much done on that part. Let me also put that in here. All right, and I'll just keep my heels up there because I like to have my heels. I'm on the second bar here, and all right, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and transport and trans warp over to the Celis Nebula for war is good for business. And there is a Gemada Dreadnought. The only way you can get Gemada Dreadnought is if you had the Lobby Crystals. And it requires 800. And if you were to buy 800 of those, you got to unlock boxes. And I'll be honest, some people that does that, and they can go through um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Some people have even done that. Alright. So let's go ahead and start War is Good for Business, since this, this is our next mission here. So one moment here while we get this load up. And here we are. The Celis Nebula. Let's see, such a show only one ship, it's the USS Shika. Situation report. She has reported intimate failures of its starboard power coupling. Devon reports that they have powerful life support weapon. Is if needed, but engines are offline. Oh, and I accidentally did that. And my hand, uh, not in the right position for the keyboard. I was assisting a team of scientists who are taking readings and not saying, okay. And a little thing if you want to get a quick little accolade is just come near the Shakar and, of course, scan the ship. 
meaning that one of the plasma conversion sensors in the EPS kind of was leading to uh, the stop of power coupling is malfunctioning that would cause the internet failures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This should cut down that time when you use repairs, yeah, yeah, yada. And there we go. Leading the lending a helping scan. So this is pretty much what we gotta do. We gotta scan the uh, the nebula of nearby asteroids. So there is one asteroid way over there that we can uh, definitely scan over. Right now, let me uh, just do that real quick. Just kind of speed things up here. And definitely to help us speed things up, so let's use this strategic maneuvering um, on this ship here. I gotta say, I like how this fits in. Entering Nebula, pockets of gas here that would make using full impulse unsafe. Yeah, so whenever you whenever you come into the into this area, you're gonna one ability you're gonna want to use is the evasive maneuverings, just because it increases um, your flight speed, turn rate, and everything um, quite a bit. So let's use this. So there's an, an enemy nearby who's flying off. So let's scan the anomaly. Anomaly scanned. Now we gotta get over, add to the next thing. Which is going to be taking quite a, which is going to be taking quite a while. I'll be honest, most of the time that you'll be spending in this mission is just the simple fact of getting through this this part here. Now you gotta admit though, that is a beautiful ship. I've gotten some comments from Cal uh, from Callum earlier how he says that this looks like the J.J. Abrams um, Enterprise from the new Star Trek series. It kind of does only because of how the end of the warp nacelles are near the Busab collectors but other than that it actually doesn't look like it and I still believe that looks like a good ship now granted you know some people may hate me on this I may you know I you know I would probably like to fly or even see the JJ Abrams Constitution in in here with this because it is a variant of the Constitution and a real and a pretty good variant as well it's close to it, it, it's pretty close to the uh, to the Constitution and there's that ship a stinger which stingers that's a Nausicaan ship so you know what's coming we're about to be we're, we're gonna have our we're gonna find ourselves into some pain with the Nausicaans Although hopefully I can catch up to this guy, see if I can maybe destroy him or not. Up, oh, he's getting away. If I had a tractor beam, this would be really great. I missed. The torpedoes missed. This flew off. Oh well, well we're about to get some company here. Oh, three targets.
this is where an AOE uh, would be much great here, especially with the uh, with, with with those power siphons. Because one thing that Nausicaan ships like to do is they will drain you of your uh, of all your ships energy. Right now, I got my powered weapon, so I'm not a uh, I mean, powered engine, so I'm not gonna be doing much damage. So let's do this real quick. Now see, without the without the strategic maneuvering, that probably would have gone a little bit. Uh, I don't know about a little bit slower, but probably would have been hectic for us. And of course, they detected the Nazcan ships, so I recommend uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of uh, caution here. So right now, let's throw caution to the wind. Nice damage that thing did. Yeah, loot item. A Voth lockbox. Like, we haven't seen any of those. Alright. Let's scan this item. Okay, Warp to Sabe is 114. Before the Nazikans tried to do anything. And I broke physics! I warped through a rock. How was that for ya, gents? We warped through a rock. So here we are, Sci uh, so here we are, delivering scientists to Starbase 114. This Starbase, right near to, right near, um, Celeste. And this is where you can find a, a you know, this is where you can find some interesting, uh, ship names, uh, because a few of these ships does have ships names, uh, not now. We got the SS uh, Baron um, Baranos and <laughs> SS Fishy's Hope. I don't think a fishy has any hope once it gets onto the hook. Uh, Commander Cle um, Cleveland on the ops here, Savage World 4. As an archer is waiting to take the next destination, now that you're here, maybe you can assist me. My inventory shows th uh, that three containers of chemocide are missing from the cargo base. Highly refined chemocide can be used to create explosives of massive power, so it's imperative that it be found right away. Chemocide. Damn. Short sure, sad because of the war with the Klingons, and then you help. Please send an away team to the cargo base and find out what's happened. So let's. Go ahead and beam down there. Really, we're just gonna be scanning, so I don't see why we'd be needing a full team. But you know, I could be wrong. I mean, I, what do I know? I'm just a lieutenant. I'm just a lieutenant commander. I'm, I, I'm only, I, I'm only just a simple lieutenant. So here we go, usually just uh, take the turbo lip, but you can also just uh, talk to, Cle to Cleveland here, how can I help, scan the cargo base of course, and before we even go on here, scanning a number of reading.
I got some good minerals there. Uh, this guy, Demar Khan, we're gonna be uh, uh, we're gonna be seeing him again here. We don't have to worry about him yet, but let's take a look here. Random person just beaming in. So here we go. Scan each of the cargo bays. So let's um, just stand in the middle of cargo bay three. Everything looks normal here. There's other variable. There's other another witch touch cover. Yeah, blah blah blah. Let's see. That was three. Use cargo bay two. Going a little bit on the reverse order here. Ooh. Uh, controls the door access to using author without oh, the They use the Ferengi cold cracker. Ah, the Ferengi cold crackers. Most famous for cracking any code. Small power cells, small high power spray. Okay. Quite, quite famous. Let me put that in. Right back in that little corner here. Probably gonna sell those, maybe. Okay, here we go. Cargo Bay 1. Scanning around. Okay, so this is the cargo bay where, of course, Cumulus Light will be um, stored. So we got only one more cargo bay, cargo bay 4. As soon as we get into the right position here, let's scan around here. Okay, we found a graph sled that had been used recently to move something heavy. The route that the sled took has been erased. These may have used it to move the Cumulus Light. Of chemo side kind of leads me to lead that had been here very recently. We should continue our search as quickly as possible. A scans of all cargo bays and they show signs of unauthorized entry, but also no chemo site anywhere on station. We're probably loaded onto a ship and it's preparing to depart and stand nearby cargo ships for stolen materials. So pretty much I'm about to be an immigration officer scan frisking pe uh, people, or in this case frisking ships for narcotics, weapons, uh, and, uh, you know, everything else. So we got a few ships here. We got the SS Laren, the SS Chandra, and the SS Nadi, pra uh, Praxan, and uh, Treasure of Zek. Says, Treasure of Zex. Zix. I keep thinking that that's probably going to be pronounced Zek because that's a uh, Ferengi ship. But at the same time, I know better of the spelling. Right now, though, I'll be honest. I've played this so many times. I'll be. I, I'll. You know. I know. I know what. I know which ship it is. We. I, but you know, honestly. We could probably go to any one of these ships. Well, I mean, let's go with the Chandra. This is pretty, pretty much what we're, what we're going to be told on, on here. I'm glad so is finally doing something about it. So we get a little compliment here. Let's um, increase our turn rate a little bit here. Laren will tell us what. Hurry up, I got to schedule the key. Of course, it would say that. Scan the treasure of Zix. I'm afraid I don't have what you see with him, but that doesn't mean we can't make a deal. Can I choose you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, for Ferengi's ship, you would think that Ferengi would have answered, but I guess not. It looks, looks, let's look at what this will be. So. Time is money, you're wasting mine. Seek your lost goods elsewhere. So that just leaves one ship. One other Ferengi vessel. Okay. Scanning the Nadi. 
Yeah, Lakima set on board the SS Nadi. And now we're off pursuit in, in pursuit. Wow, that ship is fast. That ship is fast. Let's um see we'll uh, see how we can uh, catch up to it. Now I know that's a nebula, so just like so, so just like with everything else, yeah. Give me just a moment here. And we're back, and I had to do a little catch up here, and plus help a few people with answering questions here uh, over at Teamspeak and such. But um, right now, here we are. It was actually Teamspeak. It was actually X Fire. I had a random message of somebody asking me about what I was recording, and I did not want it to waste my time going back and forth here, so I had to get everything done. So anyway, here we go. More Nausicans. And a battleship. So right now, we gotta clear this entire area. And power siphoning drones. I hate them to death. Although they are great to use if you're using a Klingon carrier. If you're in a Klingon carrier, those things will be great for SCS. So right now what I'm looking into going to combat for or with is that ship that's way over there. It's gonna take me and I hate the it's gonna take me a while, especially only because of the freaking nebula. There's literally nothing wrong with my engines except for the sheer fact that if you go into f in, in for some reason in Star Trek terms if you go into full impulse and the, then the pockets of gas once they get the plasma and well, once they hit the plasma for everything they'll go straight up the exhaust pipe and pretty much blow its load right up your ass I probably wasn't appropriate to say but then again neither are the Nausicans so right now we have ourselves a destroyer escort. It's, that is uh, another level of Nazican ships, and it has cannons. Pretty much, you can kind of tell where I was coming from, where I believe, and where. Well, I'm not exactly like sure. If I said this earlier, but I'll be honest, if you ever get a ship, you're gonna wanna have a mixture of weapons on here. Whether it's just a mixture of cannon beams and uh, torpedoes, a mixture of cannons and torpedoes, or just a mixture of beams and torpedoes. You want to mix up your weapons. You do not want to go with just one type of weapon. The reason why for that is because if you solely do one type of weapon, your ship's gonna, it, it's pretty much gonna suck. I've seen some people who do complete beam boats and they, and they fail for both PvE as well as PvP. Now sometimes cannon boats can be, can be pretty good, but you need a torpedo. And you can't do a torpedo boat. Oh, that thing's got to try to Where's my tractor beam? Oh, of course, it won't be installed until Tuesday. If you don't get the reference, kill yourself. Well, not kill yourself, but tell me in the comments. 
Hey! Got another Colvanian shield, but uh, it's got the buff on there, phaser. This is what you can get sometimes for shields. Um, if they do, if they have a buff on there that says F A um, P H F A um, D I S or anything, um, that basically means it can resist a, a weapon type. And right now, this one can resist phaser damage. But we're dealing with people that do, that, are, that are not using phasers. So let's scan the Nandi real quick. The Nandi is empty, crew must have beamed over there to the asteroid base. So let's beam over to the asteroid base ourselves, shall we? Weapon malfunction, shield recharge, what's the other words? Shield recharge. And you know what? I think I'm gonna wanna bring, um, well, wait. Not what I wanted to do. There we go. Have three tactical officers go down here. Okay, except uh, this is pretty much going to be the final part in this, which is going to be the Celeste Hidden Base. So let's go in here, picking up a, a one Ferengi inside the base. So let's go ahead and uh, see if I'm having some fun in here with this. And there's a Nasican. Always good to have a crew that uh, that that is fully stocked with weapons. Always, always good. Just realized I brought, uh, brought my uh, my regular crew member and not, and not the um and I forgot about the other guy which I thought I was bringing him down here but I guess it didn't set right for me. Which, by the way, I should always go ahead and mention this. If you want to set people to come out in your away team this is how you would set that you'll set out with this pretty much same thing with your ships uh, thing but this does for your uh, but, but this will but this will do it for your um, away team for in the future so that way oh, you're 100, okay. that way whenever you whenever you go into a instance or anything um, Way you're gonna be bringing down your crewmates, then this, then they will come down uh, for whatever you got selected. So we just picked up a new thing, a new tactical kit. But right now, too busy killing Nausicans. And I think we pretty much killed uh, vapor vaporized. Uh, Two soldier, two Nosken soldiers there. Now, if we have more people, this will definitely go faster in one aspect. That aspect being this part, because you got to split up because you do have to go be splitting up here. But that's okay. Think this ain't gonna be taking very long here. As soon as we can kill this marine. Another two in one shot. So these glowy packages here is what we need to mark. We mark them. They get they they beam out. And I fell. That was great.
not gonna worry about too much and stuff so let's just worry about killing the Marines here oh wow that guy's got a whip heavy okay the elite raider that's what it is the elite raider for the Noskins, you're gonna want what you're gonna want to be careful because they have special whips where if they hit you they're pretty much gonna stun you where you actually feel like you just got whipped if they're not using that they're more likely uh, using and one of their other built uh, one of their weapons here. So what did I pick up there? Okay. Any yeah, of these guys need it? Zava needs it. Okay. Lock B overridden. Now we just need to override one other lock. And then we'll be able and, and then we'll be able to actually go into the those doors because as you notice you got those big doors there you're not gonna be able to oh uh, to open it at least I believe you're not be able to but let's see here nope security locks in effects we already got one lock now we gotta go get the other and that other locks gonna have the remaining th uh, three stolen explosives it's chemo sites even though even it's you know it's used quite common so it's a big deal on explosives so oh, wait hang on I just realized Did we forget one on the other side? I think we did. I think we did. Did did we Phoenix? Did we? So now I can open that door right now, but I want to just make sure here. And that's not gonna be it because we got because that's a crate that we can open. Now. Yep, there it is. I <laughs> whoops ran right past it. That was nice. So let's head back out here. And we're gonna be capturing capturing the sniveling Varangi. Okay, so opening a reinforced door. Let's quick open. There's Captain Mock. Mock is vulnerable. Let's see if we can tag him for transport before he's actually dead. There we go. Tagged. So he managed to tag the Ferengi before he can uh, die. Which probably would which I'm don't even know what happens if he actually dies. I think he just gets knocked out or something. So that was it on War is Good for Business. We actually do, I believe we do get some good loot out of that. Let me just beam up here and double check. So hailing Starfleet. Good work recovering the stuff. Uh, we get a uh, phaser beam and uh, energy dampening stuff. Congratulations, Which is pretty good. Commander. And now, I believe now we can do the uh, duty officer. So let's see here. Continue. Resolve mission of duty officers. Hail. Uh, that's for the new. Uh, that, that, that's for getting a new uh, new officer from here. Okay. I'm actually going to choose that Vulcan tactical officer and I'll have him join later anyways so that was uh, pretty much it I'm gonna get we're gonna stop right here it's uh, been quite a while uh, trace station uh, yeah we'll accept that
treasure trading station. Okay, so we'll do treasure trading station for smugglers uh, for the first part of smugglers blues. Uh, we'll do that here a little bit later. We'll pro I'll probably do one either this weekend or next weekend, definitely. If um, and that was pretty much it. So I'd like to thank y'all for joining us tonight. A happy uh, belated New Year to everybody. Y'all have yourselves a good night.